Hey everyone, it's the Weekly Update. I'm Chuck Mayer. It's been a crazy day here at Fishy Business. It's been a pretty crazy week, and I know the world is a pretty crazy place right now. So thank you for taking the time to tune in, Fishy Business SC on um, YouTube. I am gonna take you through a fairly quick tour this week just because things are so crazy. And we're working with a skeleton crew as far as our staff. So we're just, we're trying to help you as much as we can and trying to keep people in here as much as we can. So please bear with us for the next couple of weeks until hopefully we get some sense of normalcy back, if ever. And uh, we'll, we'll help you as much as we can. First off, a guy seems to be trying to order everything that he can. So we have most of what I think is in our distributor's warehouse, and if we don't have it right now, it's probably on the way, unbeknownst to us, here at the store. Right now, uh, Aquiana Ascent Aquariums, BioCubes, <sighs> Reef Rock, Test Kits, water, everything is coming in right now all the time. The effort is to try to have whatever you need here so you don't have to order it or do anything like that. We're trying to provide as much as we can and as you can see this isn't even the main store and we're doing that right now. Let's go look at one of the things that came in today that I think will be important. Okay, so for anyone with a pond or any type of green water issues, you cannot be a UV filter for that. Uh, this is one of the things that we sell in mass every year about this time, and I have never had one of them come back so far. Uh, at least not so for doing its job. So this is a UV filter. We have several sizes to put on a pond. If you have green water, this will remove it with UV filtration. Uh, it is the only thing that I have found better than any chemical or anything like that. Uh, it doesn't mess up the environment in any way, but if you've got an outdoor pond and you've got green water or think that you might get green water, a UV filter is the easiest way to control that. Proving no tank is too small, Aquion has these great little all glass aquariums in varying sizes that are very, very small that you can outfit as elaborate or non-elaborate as you wish. These have just come in and they are a aquascaper's dream because it kind of tests your talents a little bit. How cool can you make something that's that small? And turns out you can make something pretty cool with it as you will see on some tank tip videos coming up where I'm gonna do several different designs in several different of these type tanks. But for right now, just realize if you're sitting at home, if you want something really cool to look at on your desk, you can put these anywhere. You don't have to have a big tank, but it can make a really, really cool project or something to just kind of pass the time for the whole family. Nothing is more important for your aquarium than water and a test kit. Obviously, you have to have water to have an aquarium. Other than that, it's just a box. But you can't have water and have anything alive in it if you don't know what that water chemistry is like. And right now, unfortunately, because we aren't doing water tests here at the store, we can still help you over the phone if you get one of these handy dandy little test kits. They're not that expensive and they have a, a plethora of uh, different test kits in them and they are the mainstay whether you've got fresh water, salt water, no matter how big, no matter how small, this is where everything begins with your aquarium and it's where it ends with your aquarium. Okay, so we're gonna move through fresh water and salt water fairly fast only because this day is moving so fast. And I do wanna show you a few things. First thing I wanna show you are the smallest baby electric blue Jack Dempsey's I think I have ever had. They're right here. Uh, tiny little baby electric blues, but very alert and active. Uh, and already starting to show those color changes that are really so cool in them. So got in some really tool, cool pink tail calias that are here and some needle nose gar. I think, needlefish, sorry, not gar, but needlefish that are really cool. All of these are young, so if you like oddball fish, these are some pretty cool oddballs to put in your tank at a young age where they can kind of grow up together. Uh, these right here are only probably an inch, maybe two inches at the most. So a good little starter size for some oddball fish. Pea puffers came in this week. They're gonna be kind of hard to see on the video, but I've got a, a good amount of them and they are full on freshwater puffers. So they do need to be kept by themselves, but those small little tanks that I was just showing you, these would be perfect. So one of my favorite Tetras that came in this week are the uh, red tail blue Colombian Tetras. Guys, if you want a fish that really pops in a school in any kind of tank that gets a little bit of size, this is a great freshwater fish to put in a big group. 
if I was designing an aquarium around a really cool aquascape, you can believe that I would use these fish to do that aquascaping with. Okay, so we got in baby fire eels, fire eels. These are really cool. It's very, it's not that often that I have them. It's not that often that I have them at this size. They're actually in with uh, some of these clawed frogs, which I know are really cool, but all these fire eels are actually kind of moving around the tank with the fish, which is very uncommon, but they are very, very cool. So if you want a good price, really, really cool eel, the fire eels with the big red line down them, can't beat them. But if the baby fire eels that I was showing you weren't cool enough, check out these. These large fire eels. I don't think we have ever had as many fire eels as we've got in right now. And as you can see, they in mass, the man, they are so cool. Got in some gorgeous turquoise rainbows. And I know I harp on these when I get them, but these are probably the prettiest turquoise rainbows I've gotten in this year. If you really want some blue, uh, some green sh uh, sheens to kind of put in your tank in an elongated fish that's very communal in terms of its behavior, you're going to have a hard time beating the turquoise rainbows. And because you've only seen pictures of them and not enough video, I want you to see these. Large peacocks that came in. There's some really, really beautiful color morphs in this. Gorgeous, the phone's ringing like it does every single minute of every single day, <laughs> of which I'm thankful of, by the way, but goodness gracious, this is why we're moving through this so fast. So let's go check out some salt water after I answer the phone. Okay, so let's look at some salt water fish. Right here, I got one of the prettiest blonde naso tangs that you'll see. Blonde naso tang is great if you've got a tank that's, I'd say, at least 75 gallons or larger. As it gets very large, very prominent, but very good with every type of fish in a tank. Even if you have an aggressive tank, it's big and bulky enough to handle keeping fish off of it. And if you've got a community tank with a bunch of little fish, it's not gonna harm anybody. So that's a great fish. Obviously the Hepatis tang, the blue tang, uh, you can't go wrong with that. It's the only color blue you'll see like that in the saltwater aquarium. And if you want that just, just incredible types of shades of blue, that's a fish for you. One thing that I have to tell you, and I rarely show lionfish, just because we get them with some regularity and they have to be kind of special to point out, this particular one has the perfect finnage. It looks just like a Japanese fishing boat or an oriental fishing boat. It, its fins and everything are perfect. Its size, it's just, it's a gorgeous lionfish. Uh, right down here, I got a blue throat trigger. Main thing about blue throat triggers, they do tend to sell out very fast because we can't get them incredibly readily. Uh, I've been trying to get one now for a couple of weeks, but it is a good hardy trigger fish that is borderline reef safe. In the wild, they typically will eat copepods, plankton. They like to feed out of the water itself. So organisms and things like that that are passing through the water column, they like. So they are a herbivorous uh, type of trigger for the most part. In reef tanks, sometimes it can go both ways. Sometimes they'll nip it inverts and things like that. But a lot of reef keepers keep them safely in a reef tank. So this particular trigger is great because it can go in a lot of different types of tanks. I don't really recommend it for an aggressive tank. It is a pretty good trigger for a beginner, even though it's a little pricey, but beautiful. Man, is it a beautiful trigger. Rounding the corner, uh, we got in a baby dog face puffer. These are great. Obviously, you would have to keep it in a non-reef tank situation, but very personable lots of character and a great fish. Uh, fish I haven't had in for a little while is the Rusty Angel. This is a dwarf angel species like the Coral Beauty and Flame Angel. It is a Central Piggy Angel. Uh, it is a great hardy type of angel to have in a tank. I got in an Emperor Angel which is equally as hardy but not so good for your corals. So don't really recommend that but if you've got a fish only or in just an invert type tank, Emperor Angel is as pretty as any angel that there is. We got in also this red goat fish, which is really cool if you watch them kind of go along the bottom with the appendages walking along the bottom. Goat fish are really cool. I got in a coral cat shark. But the coolest thing that I have in the back of the room right now is the Swiss Guard Basilette. I don't typically have them. Uh, this is one that Gracie picked up this week, and I've got it until it's gone. So great little basilette right there. I also got in this dwarf or Atlantic pygmy angel. This is, a, is an angelfish that stays very small, 
great for a small reef tank envi environment, especially like a bio cube, even, even right down to maybe even a 20 gallon tank, as it's not gonna get very big, but it has a lot of color. I have two of them. I wanted to let you know before we got out of here that we did just shoot a video on how to set up a saltwater aquarium, which is the first in our series of how to set up different types of tanks that you'll be seeing. And we've also got the coolest video coming on the line of setting up the Ascent Aquarium. That's gonna be with Kara Watson, and that is coming with our new thing, Fish Biz 101. So watch for that on Friday. Guys, I know that's a very quick overview of what we got in this week. We got in a lot more than that, and I'm sorry I don't have time in the video to show you more, but at least that gives you a little bit of an idea of what did come in. Uh, I hope all of you are safe. I hope everybody is practicing safe social distancing. We are here for you on any facet and any way that we can serve you. So please just let us know either via phone, via Facebook, via YouTube, via Instagram, however we can help you or to better serve you if you need curbside, if you need us to come to the house, whatever we can do to help you, we are here for you. Please be safe. Uh, God bless. Have a great week.